Next one is the Dead Sea Scrolls. Be very careful about the Dead Sea Scrolls, folks, because everybody who's had their hands on them has been in the pay of the Rockefeller family. And the people who are translating them now are in the pay of the Rockefeller family. And they say that some of them have leaked out and that you're getting the, the real version. You don't know that. This could have been intentional leaks, and nobody, none of us know how to really translate these things. So the Rockefellers basically are telling us what the Dead Sea Scrolls say, and I can just about tell you what they're going to tell us right off the bat, that Jesus didn't die, uh, and all kinds of things, and, and uh, well, just wait and see. Just wait and see. This is called Understanding the Dead Sea Scrolls. Understanding the Dead Sea Scrolls. A reader from the Biblical Archaeological Review, edited by Herschel Shanks. Herschel Shanks, and this is published by Random House. Now, I'm going to go a little speedy here because I don't have much time left, folks, and I want you to get as many of these as you can. Next one is Pagans and Christians. Qumran, Israel, 1947. 20 miles east of Jerusalem, at this ancient site in the Judean desert, Bedouin shepherds stumble upon an extraordinary discovery. The Dead Sea is surrounded by caves, and as young teenage boys would do, they threw a rock into the cave, heard the sound of breaking pots, came back the next day, climbed into the cave, and what did they find? They found huge clay jars. Inside the storage jars were ancient texts which very quickly they came to realize that these were incredibly important. In these scrolls, we find biblical manuscripts, copies of the Bible that are a thousand years older than any previously known copy of the Bible, as well as a treasure trove of documents that we had never seen before. Archaeologists were surprised to find that whoever collected the Dead Sea Scrolls considered the Book of Enoch to be of vital importance, preserving 11 different manuscripts, including versions never seen in modern times. Also found were fragments of another work attributed to Enoch, the Book of Giants. Some parts of this text included in the Dead Sea Scrolls had been lost for centuries. And many scholars believe the stories contained within the Book of Giants were written before even the Book of Genesis. It expounds on Genesis 6, verses 1 through 4, when the story is, is begun that the watchers descended upon Earth and took wives from Earth women, from human women, and their offspring were giants. The Book of Giants is about the Nephilim, the sons of the watchers. It's about their lives, uh, their conversations, and they realize that they are evil. According to the Book of Giants, the Nephilim were guilty of horrific crimes, including slaughtering humans and feasting on their flesh. God ultimately decides the earth must be cleansed and chooses one man to restart humanity anew, Noah the great-grandson of Enoch. In the Bible, Noah, the son of a shepherd named Lamech, and his wife Betnos, was chosen by God because of his blameless piety. But when the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered, religious scholars were shocked to find a much different and potentially older version of the story of Noah. The Lamech Scroll documents that Noah became the chosen one before he was born, and his father was not Lamech. When Noah was born, the father, Lamech, was gone at the time. However, the wife of Lamech knew immediately something was up with Noah because he didn't look like a normal human being. He is described as having skin so white it was radiant. His hair was white like wool. His father, Lamech, says he has the ways of the watchers. When he blinked, his eyes lit up the whole house. This does not sound like a human being. 
The boy looked completely different than Lamech's other children. And Lamech said to his wife, Batenosh, this can't be my son because I was away too long. You know, it doesn't fit with the nine months. And Lamech goes for advice to his father, who was the biblical Methuselah. Methuselah goes to his father, which is Enoch. Enoch says, the guardians of the sky have inseminated Batenosh without touching her sexually. He should accept this boy as his own and should give him the name of Noah because the guardians of the sky have decided Noah is the father of the coming generation. So in that case, proven in the Dead Sea Scrolls, we know for sure there was an artificial insemination. The Dead Sea Scrolls, starting with the community rule. The master shall teach the saints to live of the community rule that they may seek God with a whole heart and soul and do what is good and right before him as he commanded by the hand of Moses and all his servants, the prophets, that they may love all that he has chosen and hate all that he has rejected, that they may abstain from evil and hold fast to all good that they may practice truth, righteousness, and justice upon earth, and no longer stubbornly follow a sinful heart and lustful eyes, committing all manner of evil. He shall admit into the covenant of grace all those who have freely devoted themselves to the observance of God's precepts, that they may be joined to the counsel of God and may live perfectly before him in accordance with all that has been revealed concerning their appointed times and that they may love all the sons of light, each according to his lot and God's design, and hate the sons of darkness, each according to his guilt and God's vengeance. All those who freely devote themselves to his truth shall bring all their knowledge, powers, and possessions into the community of God, that they may purify their knowledge in the truth of God's precepts and order their powers according to his ways of perfection in their possessions according to his righteous counsel. They shall not depart from any command of God concerning their times. They shall be neither early nor late for any of their appointed times. They shall stray neither to the right nor to the left of any of his true precepts. All those who embrace the community rule shall enter into the covenant before God to obey all his commandments so that they may not abandon him during the dominion of Belial. Belial, Belial, because of fear and terror or affliction. On entering the covenant, the priests and the Levites shall bless the God of salvation and his and all his faithfulness. And all those entering the covenant shall say after him, Amen, Amen. The priest shall recite the favors of God manifested in his mighty deeds and shall declare all merciful grace to Israel and the Levites shall recite the iniquities of the children of Israel, all their guilty rebellions and sins during the dominion of Belial. And after them, all those entering the covenant shall confess and say, We have strayed, we have disobeyed. We and our fathers before us have sinned and acted wickedly in walking, counter to the precepts of truth and righteousness. And God has judged us and our fathers also, but he has bestowed upon bound his bountiful mercy on us from everlasting to everlasting. And the priest shall bless the men of the lot who, of God who walk perfectly on all his ways. May he bless you with all good and preserve you from all evil. May he lighten your heart with the life-giving wisdom and grant you eternal knowledge. May he ri raise his merciful face towards you for everlasting bliss. And the Levites shall curse all the men of the lot of Belial saying, be cursed, be cursed because of all your guilty wickedness. May he deliver you up for torture at the hands of the vengeful avengers. May he visit you with destruction by the hand of all the wreckers of revenge. Be cursed without mercy because of the darkness of your deeds. Be damned in the shadowy, shadowy place of everlasting fire. May God not heed when you call on him, nor pardon you by blotting out your sin. May he ra raise 
his angry face towards you for vengeance. May there be no peace for you in the mouth of those who hold fast to the fathers, and after blessing and cursing and all those entering the covenant shall say, Amen, Amen. And the priests and the Levites shall continue saying, Cursed be the man who enters this covenant while walking among the idols of his heart, who sets up before him his stumbling block of sin so that he may backslide. Hearing the words of this, co of this covenant, he blesses himself in his heart and says, Peace be with me, even though I walk stubborn in the stubbornness of my heart. Whereas his spirit, parched for lack of truth and watered with lies, shall be destroyed without pardon. God's wrath and his zeal for his precepts shall consume him in everlasting destruction. All the curses of the covenant shall cling to him, and God will set him apart for evil. He shall be cut off from the midst of the sons of light, and because he has turned aside from God on the account of his idols and his stumbling block of sin, his lot shall be among those who are cursed forever. And after, him, after them, all those entering the covenant shall answer and say, Amen, Amen. Thus shall they do year by year for as long as the dominion of Belial endures. The priest shall enter first, ranked one after another according to the perfection of their spirit. Then the Levites, then thirdly all the people one after another in their thousands, hundreds, fifties, tens, and every Israelite may know his place in the community of God according to the everlasting design. No man shall move down from his place nor move up from his allotted position for according to the holy design they shall all of them be in the community of truth and virtuous humility of loving kindness and good intent one towards the other and they shall all of them be sons of the everlasting company no man shall be in the grace shall be in the excuse me no man shall be in the community of his truth who refuses to enter the covenant of God, so that they may walk in the stubbornness of his heart. For his soul detests the wise teachings of just laws. Not his soul. There's a blank here because we're missing um, we're missing a, a piece of scripture here. He shall not be counted among the upright, for he has not persisted in the conversion to his, of his life. His knowledge, powers, and possessions shall not enter the council of the community, for whose, whoever plows the mud of the wickedness returns defiled. He shall not be justified by that which his stubborn heart declares lawful, for seeking the ways of the light he looks towards darkness. He shall not be reckoned among the perfect, he shall neither be purified by atonement, nor cleansed by purifying waters, nor sanctified by seas, seas and rivers, nor washed clean with any ab ablution. Unclean, unclean shall he be, for as he despises the precepts of God, he shall receive no instruction in the community of his counsel. For it is through the spirit of true counsel concerning the ways of man that all his sins shall be exp expiated, that he may contemplate the light of life. He shall be cleansed from all his sins by the spirit of holiness, uniting him to his truth and to and and his iniquity shall be expedi expiated by the spirit of uprightness and humility. And when his flesh is sprinkled with purifying water and sanctified by cleansing water, it shall be made clean by the humble submission of his soul to all the precepts of God. Let him then order his steps to walk perfectly in all thy ways commanded by God concerning the times appointed for him, straying neither to the left, neither to the right, nor to the left, transgressing none of his words, and he shall be accepted by virtue of a pleasing atonement before God, and it shall be to him a covenant of the everlasting community. The master shall instruct all the sons of light and teach them the nature of all the children of men according to the kind of spirit which they possess, the signs identifying their works during their lifetime, their visitation for chastisement, and the time of their reward. For the God of knowledge comes all that is in, in, and shall be. Before ever they existed, he established their whole design, and when he has ordained for them, they come into being. It is in accord with his glorious design that they accomplish their task without change. The laws of all these things are in his hand, and he provides them with all their needs. He has created man to govern the world, 
and has appointed for him two spirits in which to walk until the time of his visitation, the spirits of truth and injustice. Those born of the truth spring from a fountain of light, but those born of injustice spring from a source of darkness. All the children of righteousness are ruled by the prince of light and walk in the ways of light. But all the children of injustice are ruled by the angel of darkness and walk in the ways of darkness. The angel of darkness leads all the children of righteousness astray. And until his end, all their sin, iniquities, wickedness, and all their unlawful deeds are caused by his dominion in accordance with the mysteries of God. Every one of their chastisements and every one of their seasons of their distress shall be brought about the rule of his persecution. For all of his allotted spirits seek to overthrow the sons of light. But the God of Israel and his angel of truth will secure all the sons of light. For it is he who created the spirits of light in darkness and founded every action upon them and established every deed upon their ways. And he loved the one, here's a blank here, everlastingly and delights in its works forever. But the counsel of the other he loathes and forever hates his ways. These are the ways in the world for the enlightenment of the heart of man, and so that all the paths of true righteousness may be made straight before him, and so that the fear of the laws of God may be instilled in his heart, a spirit of humility, patience, abundant charity, unending goodness, unending and intelligence, a spirit of mighty wisdom which trusts in all the deeds of God and leans on his great loving kindness, a spirit of discernment in every purpose, of zeal for just laws, of holy intent, with steadfastness of heart, of great charity towards all the sons of truth, of admirable purity with that which detests all unclean idols, and of humble conduct sprung from a, an understanding of all things, and of the of faithful concealment of the mysteries of truth. These are the counsels of the spirit of the sons of the truth in this world. And as for the visitation of all who walk in this, in this spirit, it shall be healing great peace in a long life and fruitfulness together with every everlasting blessing and eternal joy in life without end, a crown of glory and garment of majesty and unending light. But the ways of the spirit of falsehood are these, greed and slackness in search, of, in search for righteousness, wickedness and lies, haughtiness and pride, falseness and deceit, cruelty and abundant evil, ill temper and much folly, and brazen insolence, abominable deeds, and it's committed in spirit of lust, in ways of lewdness in the service of uncleanliness, a blaspheming tongue, blindness of eye and dullness of ear, stiffness of neck and heaviness of heart, so that man walks in all the ways of darkness and guile. And the visitation of all who walk in the spirit shall be a multitude of plagues by the hand of the destroying angels, everlasting damnation by the avenging wrath of the, wrath of the fury of God. Eternal torment and endless, and endless disgrace together with shameful extinction and the fire of dark regions. The times of their generation shall be spent in sorrowful mourning and in bitter misery and in calamities of darkness until they are destroyed without remnant or survivor. The nature of all the children of men is ruled by these two spirits, and during their life all the hosts of men have a portion of their divisions and walk in both their ways, and the whole reward for their deed shall be for everlasting ages, according to whether each man's portion of their two divisions is great or small. For God has established the spirits in equal measure until the final age, and has set everlasting hatred between their divisions. Truth arbors the wicked, the works of injustice, and injustice hates all the ways of truth. And their struggle is fierce in all their arguments, for they do not walk together. But in the mysteries of his understanding and in his glorious wisdom, God has ordained an end for injustice. And at the time of the visitation, he will destroy it forever. Then truth, which was wallowed in the ways of wickedness during the dominion of injustice until the appointed time of judgment, shall arise in the world forever. God will then purify every deed of man with his truth. He will refine him for himself the human frame by rooting out all spirit of injustice from the bonds of his flesh. He will cleanse him from all the wicked deeds with the spirit of holiness like purifying waters. He shall... Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> he shall shed upon him the spirit of truth 
to cleanse him of all abomination and injustice. And he shall be plunged into the spirit of purification that he may instruct the upright in the knowledge of the Most High and teach the wisdom of the sons of heaven to the perfect of way. For God has chosen them for an everlasting covenant and, for, and all the glory of Adam shall be theirs. There shall be no more lies and, no mo and, and all the works of injustice shall be put to shame. Until now the spirits of truth and justice struggle in the hearts of men and they walk in both wisdom and folly. According to his portion of truth, so does man hate injustice, and according to his inheritance in the realm of injustice, so is he wicked, and so hates truth. For God has established two spirits in equal measure until the determined end, and until the renewal, he, and he knows the reward of their deeds from all eternity. He has allotted them to the children of men that they may know good and evil, that the destiny of all of the living may be according to the spirit okay. spirit within them at the time of the visitation. And this is the rule for the men of the community who have freely pledged themselves to be converted from all evil and cling to all his commandments according to his will. They shall separate from the congregation of the men of injustice and shall unite with respect to the law and the possessions under the authority of the sons of Zadok, the priests who keep the covenant, and the multitude of men of the community who hold fast the covenant. Every decision concerning doctrine, property, and justice shall be determined by them. They shall practice truth and humility in common, and justice and uprightness, and charity and modesty in all their ways. No man shall walk in the stubbornness of his heart, so that he strays after his heart and eyes of evil inclination. But he shall circumcise in the community the force the foreskin of evil inclination and of stiffness of neck that they may lay a foundation of truth for Israel for the community of the everlasting covenant they shall atone for all this, those of, in Aaron who have freely pledged themselves to holiness and for those in Israel who have freely pledged themselves to the house of truth and for those who join them to live in a community and take part in the trial and judgment and condemnation nation of all those who transgress the precepts. On joining the community, this shall be their, their code of behavior with respect of all, all these precepts. Whosoever pr approaches the council of the community shall the covenant of God in the presence of all who have freely pledged themselves. He shall undertake by binding an oath to return with all his heart and, every, and soul to every commandment of the law of Moses in accordance with all that has been revealed of it to the sons of Zadok, the priests, keepers of the covenant, and seekers of his will, and to the multitude of the men of their co covenant who together have freely pledged themselves to his truth in walking in the way of delight, and he shall undertake by the covenant to separate from all the men of, of injustice who walk in the way of wickedness. For they are not reckoned to in his covenant. They have neither inquired nor sought after him concerning his laws, that they might know the hidden things in which they have sinfully erred, and matters revealed that they treated with insolence. Therefore wrath shall rise upon, or shall rise up to condemn, and vengeance shall be executed by the curses of the covenant, and great chastisements of eternal destruction shall be visited upon them, leaving no remnant. They shall not enter the water to partake of the pure meal of the men of holiness, for they shall not be cleansed unless they turn from their wickedness, for all who transgress his word are unclean. Likewise, no man shall consort with him in regard to his work or property, lest he be burned with the guilt of his sin. He shall indeed keep away from him in all these things, as it is written, Keep away from all of them all that are false. No member of the community shall follow them in matters of doctrine and justice, or eat or drink anything of theirs, or take anything from them except for a price. As it is written, keep away from the man in whose nostrils is breath, for wherein is he counted. For all these, those not reckoned in his covenant are to be set apart together with with all that is theirs none of them sh none of none of the men of holiness shall lean upon works of vanity for they are all vanity who know not his covenant and he will blot from the world all them that despise his word 
all their deeds and defilement before him and all their property unclean. But when a man enters the covenant to walk according to all these precepts that he may be joined to the holy congregation, they shall examine his spirit and community with respect of to his understanding and practice of the law under the community under the authority excuse me of the sons of Aaron who have freely pledged themselves in the community to restore his covenant and to heed all the precepts commanded by him and the multitude of Israel who have freely pledged themselves in the community to return to his covenant they shall inscribe them in order one after another according to their understanding and their deeds that every one may obey his companion, the man of lesser rank obeying the superior. And they shall examine their spirit and deeds yearly, so that each man may be advanced in accordance with, with his understandings and perfection of way, or move down in accordance with his distortions. They shall rebuke one another in truth, humility, and charity. Let no man address his companion with anger or ill temper or a buteracy, or with every prompted by... There's a blank here because we're missing a piece of scripture. The spirit of wickedness. Let him not let him not hate him because of his uncircumcised heart, but let him rebuke him in the very same day, lest he incur guilt because of him. And furthermore, let no man accuse his companion before the congregation without having admonished him in the presence of witnesses. These are the ways in which all of them shall walk, each man with his companion, whatever they dwell, wherever they dwell. The man of lesser rank shall obey the greater, greater in matters of work and money. They shall eat in common and bless in common and de deliberate in common. Wherever there are ten men of the council of the community, there shall not lack a priest among them, and they shall all sit before him according to their rank, and shall be asked their counsel in all things in that order. And when that and when the table has prepared for eating, and the new wine for drinking, the priest shall find shall be the first to stretch out his hand to bless the first fruits of the bread and new wine. And where the ten are, there shall never lack a man among them who shall study the law continually, day and night, concerning the righteous conduct of man with his companion. And the congregation shall watch in community for a third of every night of the year to read the book and to study the law and to bless together. Each man shall sit in his place. The priest shall sit first, and the elders second, and all the rest of the people according to their rank. And thus shall they be questioned concerning the law, and concerning any counsel or matter coming before the congregation, each man bringing his knowledge to the council or of the community. No man shall interrupt a companion before his speech has ended, nor speak before a man of higher rank. Each man shall speak in his turn, and in an assembly of the congregation no man shall speak without the con consent of the congregation nor indeed of the guardian of the congregation. Should any man wish to speak to the congregation, yet be in a position to question the counsel of the community, let him rise to his feet and say, I have something to say to the congregation. If they command him to speak, he shall speak. Every man born of Israel who freely pledges himself to join the counsel of the community shall be examined by the guardian at the head of the congregation concerning his understanding and his deeds. If he is fitted to the discipline, he shall admit him to, into the covenant that he may be converted to the truth and depart from all injustice, and he shall instruct him in all the rules of the community. And later when he, come, when he comes to stand before the congregation, they shall all deliberate his case. And according to the decision of the council of the congregation, he shall either enter or depart. After he has entered the council of the community, he shall not touch the pure meal of the congregation until one full, and we have a, a piece of, piece of uh, scripture missing here, year is completed. And until he has been examined concerning his spirit and deeds, nor shall he have any share of the property of the congregation. Then when he, was, when he has completed one year within the community, the congregation shall deliberate his case with regard to his understanding and observance of the law. And if it be 
his destiny, according to the judgment of the priests of the multitude of men of their covenant, to enter the company of the community, his property and earnings shall be handed over to the bursar of the congregation who shall register it to his account and shall not spend it for the congregation. He shall not touch the drink of the congregation until he has completed his second year among the men of the community. But when the second year has passed, he shall be examined, and if he be and if it be his destiny, according to the judgment of the congregation, to enter the community, then he shall be inscribed among his brethren in the order of his rank for the law and for justice and for the pure meal. His property shall be merged, and he shall offer his counsel and judgment to the community. These are the rules which they judge at community court of inquiry according to the cases. If one of them has lied deliberately in matters of property, he shall be excluded from the pure meal of the congregation for one year and shall do penance with respect to one quarter of his food. Whoever has answered his companion with obstinacy or has addressed him impatiently, going so far as to take no account of the digenity of his fellow by disobeying the order of a brother inscribed before him, he has taken the law into his own hand. Therefore, he shall do penance for one year and shall be excluded. If any man has uttered the most vulnerable name, even though frivolously, 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 excuse me, or as a result of shock or for any other reason whatever, while rending the book of the blessing, he shall be dismissed and shall return to the council of the community no more. If he has spoken in anger against one of the priests inscribed in the book, he shall do penance for one year and shall be excluded for his soul's sake from the pure meal of the congregation. But if he has spoken unwittingly, he shall do penance for six months. Whoso, whoever has deliberately lied shall do penance for six months. Whoever has deliberately insulted his companion unjustly shall do penance for one year and shall be excluded. Whoever has deliberately deceived his companion by word or by deed shall do penance for six months. If he has failed to care for his companion, he shall do penance for three months. But if he has failed to care for the property of the community, thereby causing its loss, he shall restore it in full. And if he be unable to restore it, he shall do penance for sixty days. Whoever has borne malice against his companion unjustly shall do penance for six months slash one year. And likewise, whoever has taken right revenge in any matter what, whatever. Whoever has spoken foolishly, three months. Whoever has interrupted his companion while is speaking, ten days. Whoever has lain down to sleep during the assembly of the congregation, thirty days. And likewise, whoever has left without reason. An assembly of the congregation, as many as three times during one assembly, shall do penance for ten days. But if he departed while they were standing, he shall do penance for thirty days. Whoever has gone naked before his companion without having been obliged to do so, he shall do penance for six months. Whoever has spat in the assembly of the congregation shall do penance for 30 days. Whoever has been so poorly dressed that when drawing his hand from beneath his garment, his nakedness has been seen, he shall do penance for 30 days. Whoever has gone foolishly shall do penance for 30 days. Whoever has drawn out his left hand to gesticulate with it shall do penance for 10 days. Whoever has gone out slandering his companion shall be excluded from the pure meal of the congregation for one year and shall do penance. But whoever has slandered the congregation shall be expelled from among them and shall return no more. Whoever has murmured against the authority of the community shall be expelled and shall not return. But if he has murmured against his companion unjustly, he shall do penance for six months. Should a man return worse, whose, whose spirit has so trembled before the authority of the community that he has betrayed the truth and walked in the stubbornness of heart, he shall do penance for two years. During the first year he shall not touch the pure meal of the congregation, and during the second year he shall not touch the drink of the congregation, and shall sit below all the men of the community. Then when his two years are completed, the congregation shall consider his case, and if he be and if he is admitted, he shall be inscribed in his rank, and may then question concerning the law. 
if after being in the council of the community for for ten full years, the spirit of any man has def has failed, so that he has betrayed the community and departed from the congregation to walk in the stubbornness of his heart, he shall return no more to the council of the community. Moreover, if any member of the community has shared with him his food or property which the congregation has sentenced, shall be the same; he shall be expelled. In the council of the community, there shall be twelve men and three priests, perfectly versed in all that is revealed of the law whose works shall be truth, righteousness, justice, loving kindness, and humility. They shall preserve the faith in the land with steadfastness and meekness, and shall atone for sin by the practice of justice and by suffering the sorrows of affliction. They shall walk with all men according to the standard of truth and the rule of the time. When these are in Israel, and the, the council of the community shall be established in truth. It shall be an everlasting plantation, a house of holiness for Israel, an assembly of supreme holiness for Aaron. They shall be witness to the truth at the judgment, and shall be the elect of goodwill, who shall atone for the land and pay to the wicked their reward. It shall be that tried wall, that precious cornerstone, whose foundation shall neither rock nor sway in their place. It shall be a most holy dwelling for Aaron, with everlasting knowledge of the covenant of justice, and shall offer up sweet fragrance. It shall be a house of perfection and truth in Israel, that they may establish a covenant according to the everlasting precepts, and they shall be an agreeable offering, atoning for the land and determining in the judgment of wickedness, and there shall be no more iniquity. When they have been confirmed for two years in perfection of way the foundation of the community, they shall be set apart as holy with the counsel of the men of the community. And the, the interpreter shall not conceal from them out of fear of the spirit of apostasy any of those things hidden from Israel which have been discovered by him. And when these become members of the community in Israel according to all these rules, they shall separate from the habitation of the unjust men and shall go into the wilderness to prepare there oh, the way of him as it is written prepare in the wilderness the way of make straight in the desert a path for our God this path is the study of the law which he commanded by the hand of Moses that they may do according to all that has been revealed from age to age and as the prophets have revealed by his Holy Spirit and no man among the members of the covenant of the community who deliberately or any point whatsoever turns aside from all that is commanded shall touch the pure mill of the men of holiness or know anything of their counsel until his deeds are purified from all injustice and he walks in perfection of way. And then according to the judgment of the congregation, he shall be admitted to the council and shall be inscribed in rank. This, shall, shall, this rule shall apply to whoever enters the community. Every man who enters the council of holiness, who walk in the way of perfection as commanded by God, and who deliberately or through negligence transgress one of the word of the law of Moses on any one point whatever, shall be expelled from the council of the community and shall return no more. No man of holiness shall be associated in his property or council in any matter at all. But if he has acted inadvertently, he shall be excluded from the pure meal and the council, and they shall interpret the rule as follows. For two years he shall take a no, no part in judgment or ask for counsel. But if during that time his way becomes perfect, then he shall return to the court of inquiry and the council in accordance with the judgment of the congregation, provided that he commit no further inadvertent sin during two full years. For one sin of inadvertence alone, he shall do penance for two years, but as for him who sinned deliberately, he shall never return. Only the man who has sinned inadvertently shall be tried for two years, that his way in the council may be made perfect according to the judgment of the congregation and afterwards, and shall be inscribed in his rank with the community of holiness. When th these became, become members of the community in Israel, according to all these rules, they shall establish the spirit of holiness according to everlasting truth. They shall atone for guilty rebellion and for the sins of unfaithfulness, that they may obtain loving kindness for the land without the flesh of the holocaust and the fat of sacrifice. 
and prayer rightly offered shall be as an acceptable fragrance of righteousness and perfection of way as a delectable free will offering. At that time, the men of the community shall set apart a house of holiness in order that it may be united to be united to the most holy things in a house of community for Israel for those who walk in perfection. The sons of Aaron alone shall command in matters of justice and property, and every rule concerning the men of the community shall be determined according to their word. As for the property of the men of holiness who walk in perfection, it shall not be merged with that of the men of injustice who have not purified their life by separating themselves from iniquity and walking in the way of perfection. They shall depart from none of the counsels of the law to walk in all the stubbornness of their hearts but shall be ruled by the primitive precepts in which the men of the community were first instructed until there shall come the prophet of the messiah of the messiahs of Aaron in Israel there are precepts in which master shall walk in his commerce with all the living according to the world proper to every season and according to the worth of every man. He shall do the will of God according to all that has been revealed from age to age. He shall measure out all knowledge and discover throughout the ages together with the precept of the age. He shall separate and weigh the sons of righteousness according to their spirit. He shall hold firmly to the elect of the of the time according to his will as he has commanded. He shall judge every man according to his spirit. He shall admit him in accordance with the cleanliness of his hands and in advance him in accordance with his understanding and show love and hate likewise. He shall not rebuke the men of the pit nor dispute with them. He shall conceal the teaching of the law from men of injustice, but shall impart true knowledge and righteousness, ju righteous judgment to those who have chosen the way. He shall guide them in all knowledge according to the spirit of uh, of each of the according to the rule of the age and shall th thus instruct them in the mysteries of the marvelous truth, so that in the midst of men of the community they may walk perfectly together in all that has been revealed to them. This is a time for preparation of the way into the wilderness, and he shall teach them to do all that is requited, required, required at the time, and to separate from all those who have not turned aside from all injustice. Everlasting hatred and spirit of, of secrecy for the men of perdition. He shall leave, the, leave to them wealth and earnings like a slave to his Lord and like a poor man to his master. He shall be a man zealous for the precept whose time is for the day of revenge. He shall perform the will of God in all his deeds and all his dominion as he has commanded. He shall freely delight in all that, be, that befalls him and nothing shall please him save God's will. He shall delight in all the words of his mouth and shall desire nothing except his command. He shall watch always for the judgment of God and shall bless his maker for all his goodness and declare his mercies and that all be false. He shall bless him with, an, uh, with the offering of the lips at the times ordained by him at the beginning of dominion of light and at its end. When it retires to appointed place at the beginning of the watches of darkness, when he unlocks a storehouse and spreads them out, and also at their end when they retire before light, when the heavenly lights shine out from the dwelling place of holiness, and also when they retire to the place of glory at the entry of the monthly seasons on the days of the new moon, and also at their end when they succeed to one another. The renewal is a great day for holy of holies and a sign for unlocking of everlasting mercies at the beginning of seasons and all time to come. At the beginning of the months of the yearly seasons and in the holy days appointed for remembrance, in their seasons I will bless him with the offering of the lips according to the precept engraved forever. At the beginning of the years and at the end of the seasons when their appointed law is fulfilled on the day decreed by him, they, that they should pass from one to the other. The season of early harvest to the summertime. The season of sowing the season of grass. The seasons of, of years to their weeks of years. 
and at the beginning of their weeks for the season of Jubilee. All my life the engraved precepts shall be on my tongue as a fruit of praise and the portion of my lips. I will sing with knowledge, and all music shall be for the glory of God. My lyre and my harp shall sound for his holy order, and I will tune the pipe of my lips to his right measure. With the coming of day and night I will enter the covenant of God, and when evening and morning depart I will recite his decrees. I will place them in my bounds without return. I will declare his judgment concerning my sins and my transgressions before my eyes as engraved precept. I will say to God, my righteousness and author of my goodness to the most high fountain of knowledge and source of holiness, submit of glory and almighty eternal majesty. I will choose that which he teaches me and will delight in his judgment of me. Before I move my hands and feet, I will bless his name. I will praise him before I go out. To, or enter or sit or rise and willest I lie on the couch of my bed I will bless him with the offering of that which proceeds from my lips from the midst of the ranks of men and before I lift my hands to eat of the pleasant fruits of the earth I will bless him for his exceeding wonderful deeds at the beginning and fear and dread and in the abode of distress and desolation I will meditate on his power and will lean on his mercies all day long I know that judgment of all the living is in his hand and all and, and that all his deeds are truth I will praise him when the distress is unleashed and will magnify him also because of his salvation I will pay no attention to the reward of evil I will pursue him with goodness for judgment of all the living is with God and it is he who will render to man his reward I will not envy in spirit of wickedness my soul shall not desire the riches of violence I will not grapple with the men of perdition until the day of revenge But my wrath shall not turn from the men of falsehood, and I will not rejoice until judgment is made. I will bear no rancor against them that, that turn from transgression, but will have no pity on, on all who depart from the way. I will offer no comfort to the smitten until their way becomes perfect. I will not be lile within my heart, and, I, and in my mouth shall be heard no folly or sinful deceit. No cunning or lies shall be found in my lips. The fruit of holiness shall be on my tongue, and no abomination shall be found upon it. I will open my mouth in songs of thanksgiving, and my tongue shall always proclaim the goodness of God and the sin of men until the transgression ends. I will cause vanities to cease from my lips, uncleanliness and crookedness from the knowledge of my heart. I will impart slash conceal knowledge with discretion and will prudently hedge it with in a firm bond to preserve faith and strong judgment in accordance with the justice of God. I will distribute the precept by the measuring cord of the times and righteousness and loving kindness towards the oppressed, encouragement to the troubled heart, and discernment to the erring spirit, teaching understanding to them that murmur that they might answer meekly before the haughty of spirit and humbly before the men of injustice who point the finger and speak inequity and who are zealous for wealth. As for me, my justification is with God, and his hand are the perfection of my way and the uprightness of my heart. He will wipe out my transgression through his righteousness. For my light has sprung from the source of his knowledge. My eyes have beheld his marvelous deeds. And the light of my heart, the mystery to come, he that is everlasting is the support of my right hand. The way of my steps is over stout rock, which nothing shall shake. For the rock of my steps is the truth of God, and his might is the support of my right hand. From the source of his righteousness is my justification, and from his marvelous mysteries is the light of my light in my heart. My eyes have gazed on the, on that which is eternal, on wisdom concealed from men, on knowledge and wise design, hidden from the sons of men, on a fountain of righteousness, and on a storehouse of power, on a spring of glory, hidden from the assembly of flesh. God has given them to to his chosen ones and as an everlasting possession and has caused them to inherit the lot of the holy ones he has joined their assembly to the sons of heaven to be council of the community a foundation of the building of holiness an eternal plantation throughout all ages to come 
As for me, I belong to wicked mankind, to the company of unjust flesh. My iniquities, rebellions, and sins together with perversity of my heart belong to the company of worms and to those who walk in darkness, for mankind has no way. And man is unable to establish his steps since justification is with God, and perfection of way is out of his hand. All things come to pass by his knowledge. He establishes all things by his design, and without him nothing is done. As for me, if I stumble, the mercies of God shall be my eternal salvation. If I stagger because of the sin of, of flesh, my justification shall be the right by the righteousness of God, which endures forever. When my distress is unleashed, he will deliver my soul from the pit and will direct my steps to the way. He will draw me near by his grace and by his mercy and will bring my justification. He will judge me in the righteousness of his truth and in the greatness of his goodness. He will pardon all my sins through his righteousness. He will cleanse me of the uncleanness of man and of the sins of the children of men that I may confess to God and his righteousness and his majesty to the Most High. Blessed art thou, my God, who openest the heart of thy servant to knowledge. Establish all his deeds in righteousness and as it pleases thee to do for the elect of mankind. Grant that the son of thy handmaid may stand before thee forever. For without thee no way is perfect, and without thy will nothing is done. It is thou who has taught all knowledge, and all things come to pass by thy will. There is none besides thee to dispute thy counsel, or to understand all thy holy design, or to contemplate the depth of thy mysteries and the power of thy might. Who can endure thy glory, and what is the Son of Man in the midst of thy wonderful deeds? What shall be what shall one born of woman be accounted for before thee? Needed from the dust, his abode is the nourishment of worms, but he is a shape but molded clay, and inclines towards dust. What shall hand molded clay reply? What counsel shall it understand? And that's the end of the community rule manuscripts. I'm, I'm sorry, just the regular community rules.